Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be going over 100 ideas for flipping. Uh, now one problem I have personally a lot is I will often run out of ideas or run out of inspiration on what items flip because realistically anything will work but some items obviously work better than others. So the purpose of this video is to be kind of a brainstorming video. So I'm going to be giving you 100 ideas of flips that have personally worked for me and I continue to do often. About one third of these are going to be free to play items and two thirds of them will be pay to play. I am going to be going through the items quickly, giving you a snippet of information and moving on. I'm not going to be focusing so much on the margins as those are going to change all the time, but more the upfront cost of the item and just my personal opinion on it. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get started. Okay, now before we get started here, I have organized this list kind of from the cheapest items to the most expensive. First, we're gonna be going over some free to play items, and next, we're gonna be going over the majority pay to play. Now, hopefully, if I'm not a lazy piece of crap, I will <laughs> timestamp the video for you. And the last thing before I get started, I did make this into a spreadsheet, so if you're interested in just a text version of it, there will be a link in the description for that. Okay, first up here, let's go over some free to play ideas. Now, we're gonna start with the cheapest items, so just kinda high volume items. Now, free to play does have the benefit of having a few very good high volume items. First up here, we have the La Rune, only costing around 150 GP. I've noticed there actually often is pretty good margins on the La Rune, better than some of the other rune counterparts. Next up, the Death Rune, a little bit more expensive, but again, can generally get a 2 to 5 GP margin. You're not going to be really making much back until you have a couple million GP to start flipping with. But if anything, it's a pretty good practice item. The time it should take to flip any popular rune is probably 5 to 10 minutes max. Adamantite Ore is another pretty good free-to-play flip, uh, much cheaper right now, so if you're looking to get a pretty good bargain on a free-to-play item with good margins, I would try the Adamantite Ore. In the same vein, we have Adamant Bars. Now most of the important information for the item will be on screen. We have the buying quantity, selling quantity, which is just the general volumes. And another important one here, we have the buying limit down here. So if you're interested what the buying limit of the item is, I'm not going to be saying it out loud, but it should be displayed on screen. Another similar item, we have the Mithril Bar currently worth around 600 GP, often has very good margins and a very high buying quantity. A uh, similar item we have Mithril Ore, which is hilariously cheap. Mithril Ore is actually cheaper than coal now, I think. Next up, the Nature Rune, a very quick item, such a high volume. Unfortunately, you don't generally get more than a one GP margin, but a very good practice item. Uh, next up, Coal. Yeah, Coal is literally more expensive than Mithril, that's pretty sad. Coal I sometimes can get a two to five GP margin on, and it's a fairly cheap item, so it's definitely worth doing. Now, the Wine of Zamrak is a fairly expensive high volume item. If you have the money for it, I would recommend trying it. But honestly, the return on investment is often pretty low. Also, this number here is the return on investment. So that is the percentage of your money that you're getting back based on your investment. So for example, the Wine of Zamrak is 0.28, displayed right here. Uh, the Adamante Ore is 0.37, so you're actually getting a better value out of this item. Next up here, we have the Gold Ore, a very good item. I do it quite a bit, and it often has better margins than some of these hyper-popular items do. Alright, so that was just a few ideas of high-volume items for free-to-play. Obviously, not all of them by a long shot. So now I want to move on to items that are under 100,000 GP. Most of these are going to be higher margin items and not resource items, stuff like that. Now there's actually a surprisingly good amount of items to do in free-to-play that most people don't actually know about or do that much. A lot of them are clue scroll rewards. So for example, first up here we have the Strength Amulet T, which is a clue scroll reward, also available in free-to-play. At very low volume, but you can get 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 GP margin on items like this. Next up here we have the Ancient Kite Shield, currently has around a 5k margin. Now these items are especially good if you don't have that much money because you actually get a very good return on investment. So if you only really have a million GP to work with, these items are going to get you a lot more money back than just investing all of your money into Swordfish or Blood Runes and stuff like that. Next up here we have the Amulet of Defense Trimmed, which is one of the new uh, beginner clue scroll rewards. Uh, we have the Rune Plate Body G, an item that's been in the game for quite a while, but you can get pretty good margins on it as well. In a similar vein, we have the Mithril Plate Body G. I would highly recommend doing a margin check on these items, just so you know the accurate pricing, because you're not going to lose very much money on it. Uh, we have the Studded Chaps G, which currently has a 75% return on it. That's not unheard of, you can get double your money back often on some of these items. 
And the beauty of clue scroll items is people are going to get these accidentally all the time, dump them in the grand exchange. So you're always going to have a supply to purchase, but also there's fashion escape. So people are interested in buying these items still. So there's always going to be a market for them. We have the Mithril Full Helm T, the Adamant Plate Body G, currently with a 6k margin, pretty good. Uh, the Blue Wizard Robe T, in one of my flipping series, I think I got a 25k margin on this item. And another new item here, the Sandwich Lady Top. Currently it says it has a 200% return on it, uh, which honestly could be accurate. Okay, so obviously these items are all in the exact same vein. Unfortunately, free-to-play just don't have a lot of good options, so these are your best options. Items like this, as well as high-volume items. Okay, next up here we have items that are under 1 million GP in free-to-play. Uh, first up here we have the Jester Cape, which is a brand new item or new-ish item that came with the beginner clue scroll update. A lot of those items are still worth quite a bit just because they haven't really been in the game long enough. Next up here we have the Shoulder Parrot, uh, which has stabilized at around 250,000 GP. <laughs> On release, it was worth around 3 mil, so that has tanked it pretty quickly. Okay, we have the Rune Scimitar Ornament Kits, which are free to play, and I've gotten very good margins on these items. I think I got a 50,000 GP margin on the Sarah Doman version of it. Okay, next up here we have the Hill Giant Club, currently around 650,000 GP. I would imagine that you could easily get a 20,000 to 50,000 GP margin on it. And look at the limit, 125. You will never run out of investing room. And last up here, just under a mil, we have the Gilded Chain Body. I have gotten 100,000 GP margins on this item before. This item is actually a personal favorite of mine. It has very good margins often, squeaks under a million GP in cost, as well as it has a very high GE limit, and actually is traded a decent amount. Okay, now in the past, I generally wouldn't recommend really bothering going past a couple million GP in free-to-play uh, because you could just buy a bond and things would be way quicker. However, nowadays that's just not the case because bonds are so bloody expensive. Now flipping items that are 1 or 2 mil, 3 or 4 mil, 5 mil is actually kind of realistic uh, with bonds being around 6 to 6.5 mil which is crazy. Now there aren't that many free-to-play items over a million GP in cost but there are a few ones, uh, most of them gilded items. Uh, first up here we have the Gilded Play Body, currently has a 60,000 GP margin, that's actually very very good. Uh, another Gilded item here is the Gilded Kite Shield, about a 2 mil item with a 1% ROI, not terrible. We also have the Gilded Plate Legs, the Gilded Full Helm with a 2% return, pretty good. And we also have some very expensive Team Cape options, which again are some of my favorite items to do even in membership. I often get a 100k margin on Team Cape Zeros, here we can see that there's a 50k margin which is still very good as well as Team Cape X's, which are showing a 100,000 GP margin, and actually only a 2 mil investment, so that's a 4.6% return, definitely worth doing. And last up here, if you want to go really crazy, we have the Rink of Nature, currently has a 300,000 GP margin. It is a free-to-play item, but realistically, if you have 10 million GP, you should invest that in a bond. Okay, so now we're moving on to the crazy world of pay-to-play items. Okay, first up here we have the Rune Dart, an item only around 1,000 GP. Has worked very well for me in the past. Another similar item is the Rune Dart Tip. I would try either of these. They don't share a buying limit as far as I'm aware. Unfinished potions work very nicely. I would hesitate to even put them in the high volume section because they are quite slow, but they're cheap and they do come through eventually, usually in big clumps randomly as people make the potions. Uh, same thing here for the Quorum Potion Unfinished. Next up here we have the Burnt Page, a very expensive item, even more expensive now, wow. That has gone up a lot recently. When it was 5,000 GP, I often could find uh, 70 to 80 GP margins. Uh, next up here we have the Dragon Dart, one of my favorite items. Uh, if you can find a good margin on it, this item flips very quickly. And same thing for the Dragon Dart Tip. Revenant Ether I find personally just to be a better version of Zara Scales. They're often cheaper, the margins are often better, and the GE limit is still 30,000 so very good. However, Zara Scales are also good. I barely ever get more than a 1 GP margin on this item though, so it's kind of debatable whether it's actually worth your time. And next up here we have the Cannonball. For whatever reason, this item actually has much higher margins than the quantity would indicate. And now for runes and pay to play, I like to do blood runes a lot, as well as soul runes. Obviously any of the other free to play runes are good to go as well. And I also like to do wrath runes. I like to do these runes because the margins are generally uh, 2 to 5, as opposed to most runes, which are 1 GP often. And uh, we have another dart tip here, the adamantite dart tip. 
usually has a pretty good ROI on it. I often like to do planks. A very quick flip usually I do oak planks, mahogany planks sometimes, occasionally teak planks but not very frequently. Air orbs or really any variant of the orb can be very good. I sometimes like doing less commonly made orbs like earth orbs or water orbs because there still is a market for them but the margin can be larger. It really depends how attentive you want to be while you're flipping. Uh, dragonstone bolts or really any variant of the dragonstone bolt, very good. Now one of my favorite items for a long time was dragon bolts or at least variants of the dragon bolts because there's just so many of them. Now look at all these options and all of them will have separate margins separate people trying to flip them, so it's pretty easy to find something here that's good. And we have the dragon leathers. Now I frequently do the dragon leathers instead of the dragon hides, just because I find the margins to be larger, although the volume is less. It's kind of a personal preference. I like to be able to put an offer in, leave for an hour or two and come back as opposed to having to stay there and watch it attentively. So I do the black dragon leather, green dragon leather, the red dragon leather, and even the blue dragon leather. Of the four, I think red dragon is probably the least popular, but subsequently has the best margin. Now in pay to play, there are a ton of different items to do, but often people don't end up trying the really cheap items. What I'm talking about is high margin items under 100,000 GP. A lot of people just don't think it's worth their time, but often these items have the best return on investment and can even have pretty uh, competitive margins as well. Like for example, first up here we have the Holy Blessing, has an 80% return on it, uh, definitely buys and sells pretty quickly. The limit kind of sucks, but that's still a very good return for a very minimal investment. We also have the Elemental Shield, a very cheap item, limit of 70, which is very nice. Another item we have is the Master Scroll Book, has a limit of 100 and currently a margin of 7,000. Another Clue Scroll item is the Zamorak Cloak, or really any Clue Scroll Cloak. Now we have an item here that could kind of be considered both high margin and high volume, the Maple Sapling. Uh, Dragon Swords are now under 100,000 GP. They have tanked it ever since being added to the Worm drop table. Uh, we have the Robe Bottom of Darkness, which is another Clue Scroll reward. I made a ton of money when this item was released. Uh, the Dragon Chain Body Ornament Kit, a very dirt cheap ornament kit I would recommend giving a try. Currently has a 90% return on it. Uh, we have the Farseer Helm, or really any of the Fremnik Helms. All of them are under 100,000 GP. All of them are useful. One item we have is the Malediction Shard 1, a very, very rare item. But people do combine these things into Malediction Wards, which means that this item is always going to be useful to somebody. Okay, so next up we're moving on to items that are under 1 million GP, and this is when things really start to get good. Uh, for example, we have God Dehyde Boots, which I have gotten 100,000 GP margins very frequently. Uh, we have God Pages, which vary in price a lot, so that's what I really like about this. Uh, we have the Granite Gloves, which is a PVM drop. Not a very in-market item, but still used occasionally. Uh, the Ceridoman Sword, uh, finally under a mill. I wouldn't expect a huge return on it because this is a very popular item. Any part of the Elder Chaos set, I've had very good luck on, and the limit's very high as well, 125, so if you do have a lot of money to invest, you can do that. Uh, the Occult Necklace, always going to be a very popular item just because of how good it is. But also very cheap because it's very easy to obtain. Uh, we have the Kirill's Crossbow, which <laughs> for some reason is showing a 1.7 million GP return. Not accurate, but uh, who knows what happened there. Uh, we have any part of the Obsidian Armor set. Most of the pieces are under a million GP. Most of them have very good returns. We have the Holy Sandals with around a 33,000 GP margin on it right now. Kind of gated by its limit, but that's not a big deal. We have a very similar item, the Devout Boots, but the benefit here is it has a limit of 70. We have the Toreg's Armor Set, which you can flip directly, and it's under a million GP, or you can flip the individual pieces. We have the Granite Hammer, which I swear when I loaded this page up was under a mil. Now it's slightly over, but you get the idea. And last up here, another idea is the Truver Parchment. I made a ton of money on this item when it released, so maybe you can too. Okay, so now we're looking at items under 10 million GP. Now you have really a ton of options here. Uh, first up here, we have the Fury Ornament Kit. A really good ROI on this item often. Pretty cheap considering the return. Uh, we have the Infinity Gloves. This item, really good because of how high of a limit it has, 125. Good returns, although highly competitive it seems. Uh, same thing with the Master Wand. Uh, we have a really high GE limit of 70. The return can vary a lot, but I've gotten 50,000 to 100,000 GP margins. 
We have the crossbow, which is now actually under 10 million GP. For a long time, I was getting 100,000 GP returns on it. Only as a limit of 8, but a very quick flip. Uh, we have the Malediction Ward. Again, only a GE limit of 8, but a very good margin often. Now, I've had pretty good success with the Regen Bracelet. Has a very high limit of 70 and pretty good returns considering its price. Another one of my favorite items is the Dragon Plate Body. Currently has 130,000 GP return and a limit of 70, which means you can invest theoretically a lot of money. Uh, the Staff of the Dead, yesterday I actually got a 300k profit on this item. Not a very high volume item, so you want to be a bit careful with it. We have the Hydra Leather now, kind of an interesting limit of 15. I'm not sure how that was decided, but often has very good margins on it as well. Uh, the Vergora's Chain Mace is very cheap now, only 2.5 mil. I find the Wilderness Weapons to have very good returns often. A pretty new item is the Dagon High set. Most of the pieces are under 10 million now. Flip at your own risk because they are still rather new, but I've had very good success with these items. Uh, next up here we have the Guardian Boots, which I often seem to get a 50,000 GP margin on. And last up here we have items under 100 million GP. I'm not going to bother going past this because I think at that point you probably know what you're doing anyway. Now there's obviously a ton of options here, but one really popular one and one I do a lot is the Dragon Claws. If you get lucky, you can sometimes get 200 or 300,000 GP margins. We have the Ancestral Robe Top, which is all over the place usually, but you can usually get a couple hundred thousand GP margins on it. And next up here we have the Imbued Heart. I haven't really tried this item too much personally, but I know people have had pretty good success with it. Uh, the Basilisk Jaw, a fairly new item and one that I've made a lot of money on. It does seem to have stabilized around the 30 mil mark, so it's not as volatile as it's been. We have the Dex Prayer Scroll, which currently has a 300k margin. Actually a pretty decent item that I do a lot. The only problem is its limit is somewhat low. Uh, we have the Pegasian Boots. Really haven't had much success on this item, but I know some people do. The Dragon Warhammer is kind of in the same realm as the Dragon Claws. Can work really well sometimes. Not usually worth doing unless it has at least a 50,000, 100,000 GP margin. Okay, the Dragon Hunter Crossbow is actually squeaking under 100 mil now. Usually you can get at least 100 to 200,000 GP margin on this item, and it's a very quick flip. Which means if you do really have a lot of capital to work with, you can make an easy million GP in just a few minutes. And the same thing for the Dragon Hunter Lance. The Lance does generally have higher margins, but again, slightly less of a volume. And last appear really any item from the Justicia armor set. Usually has pretty good ROIs comparative to some of these other items I've mentioned. And that is it. I think that's 100 items, plus or minus a few maybe if I messed up my counting. But I think it's probably close enough. That is going to be it for the video. Let me know what you think of this type of video. I'm not really sure if people are going to like it or not. Some people may find it boring. Maybe some people find it interesting. If you find it useful as kind of just a brainstorming idea, let me know with a comment or a like on the video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.